I noticed. You okay? Yes. Look, momentum, right? Jump, tap, right? One move, jump, tap. I know how to do it, Dad. Oh, do you? Yes. Really? Because it didn't look like it from I my just end. I messed up on the timing. Jump. <laughs> like that. You see what I did? You see what I did? No. You're like this small. I jumped and tapped. <laughs> Welcome back to Late Night. We're here with Paul Rudd. <laughs> That was a clip from Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, a very anticipated film. I don't know if this is true or not. I, I somehow I heard word that uh, Shoemaker was somehow able to get tickets yeah. on Thursday night. Yeah. Who, who does he know? Yeah. He's been walking around. I guess he knows this uh, Jeff Fandango guy. He must be high Hollywood up. Hollywood bigwig. <laughs> He's high wow. up the Marvel chain. <laughs> That's impressive. Um, uh, this is really fun third movie. Third uh, one. Third one in the Ant-Man. And yeah. um, this was a really fun dynamic of teenage daughter, which you have now. Mm -hmm. um, yep. How have you found being a parent of a teenage daughter? Are you, are you enjoying that journey? I know it's the, the front end of being a teenager. It's great. Yeah. You know, my daughter is, is yeah, she's just now starting to approach that. And um, I'm a little, a little nervous, I, you know, uh, People always say, oh, wait, you know, teenage daughters, there's a few years there where it can be a little challenging. And uh, it hasn't been yet. She hasn't turned on you yet. Talk to me, interview me in Ant-Man 4. Yeah, okay, got you. <laughs> Hold everything. Not gonna... that there is one, by the way. Yeah. I just, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, um, it just seemed like that was the right joke to say for the, yeah. yeah. But now, yeah, the, everybody at Marvel right now is pulling their hair out. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> We told him not but to then, even joke about it. But on Ant-Man 7, I'm going to say, <laughs> she's the best. She's so accepting. Yeah. And she became a real friend. Yeah. And open. And then and on like, Ant-Man 10, yeah. we're like, and now she has a daughter. I know. It's so crazy. It's so nuts. Oh, my you know, God. Being a grandfather is really <laughs> something special. Ugh, a little harder to get into the suit, but we're managing. There you go. Now, I know, and we've talked about this before. Uh, first of all, it's, it's always so great to have you here. Uh, oftentimes, uh, I sort of am lucky enough to have you, but it's the end of your press tour, yeah. and I get it. You're, like, sort of exhausted about talking about this movie. There's probably no more anecdotes from the set to share. It's a tricky thing, you know? Yeah, you do this, you want to, like, oh, what's been going on? And are there any funny stories or anything? And you get a little kind of tired, and, and, yeah. and there's only so, you know... Right, it wasn't like every day there were hijinks. The well gets dry. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, as a favor to you, I would like you to tell us a story about something that didn't happen. Okay. Just to give you a break, right? An anecdote, something that like, yeah. just didn't happen to me. Do you want me to just sort of make up the top of it for you? Yeah. Okay, great. Sure. So, um, I heard you were skiing. Oh, this is my favorite kind of water, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's a, we had a regular size, but then we heard you wanted to tie it into Ant-Man. <laughs> that's right. That's right. God. You're the best, man. Yeah, well, you are the best. Look, oh. I will do mm. tie-ins. Um, Hold on, I'm going to chug it. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Oh. <laughs> All right. So you don't mind? I can no, say, no, no, I no, whatever you want. I can just say the kind of story that I would like you to come, be coming here to tell. OK. So I heard you were skiing oh. in Switzerland, and you were on one of those gondolas, yeah. and it stopped halfway up, and you were stuck on it with 11 strangers for 24 hours. It was the craziest thing. Yeah. Also, you know, it was the first time I'd ever been there. Yep. I'm nervous about heights anyway. Sure. And uh, the few times that I'd taken a, uh, the ski, it was the two-seater, you know, like the standard, I, yeah. I, I, I hate it. But right. the great thing about being in Switzerland and the Alps, they have the gondolas. Yeah. Nice and warm, protected from warm, the elements. Warm, protected. <laughs> The thing is, is when you are in there with all of those people and it stops, they're from different parts of the world. I was the only one who spoke English. Oh, God. And, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and it's like the pow it, power goes out, everything, it shut down, and there was no way that we were going to get down. And I was really panicked. And so I started asking people, what do you do? What kind of do? And no one, right. no one could uh, talk to me. Uh, Did you feel like of, of any of them even recognized you as sort of, um, you know, because again, your movies are internationally known. Did, did you feel like any recognition? No, okay. not at all. <laughs> there was one person, okay. one person who did recognize me, okay. but they were ultimately disappointed because they actually pegged me for being a writer on your show. Oh, right. <laughs>
<laughs> all the way around. <laughs> wow, wow. All the way around. Right. Oh, wow. Yeah. See, that was a great story. That was, uh... See, it had I a mean, nice... It, had a, it got a little slow in the middle. But I think <laughs> when you can pay it off like that... Oh, and see, this is really, why yeah. don't be hard. When you get worried about not having stories on talk shows, just ask for the old setup. Yeah, that's just it. You throw anything. I'm... I'm it's a much better way to go. Did I tell you about the time I was scuba diving uh, in, in um, Cozumel? And so Cozumel? just real quick before you tell me, happened or didn't happen? Didn't happen. Tell me. Uh, well, apparently, <laughs> I'm like, uh, new to scuba diving. Okay. And you're, you're not supposed to fly the next day. Oh, gotcha. Al also, when you go below uh, 60 feet or something, you have to kind of decompress for three minutes. You get something called, I think, nitrogen narcosis. Yeah. Or something like that. And, uh, and then if you fly the next day, you can get the bends. You can die. Okay. I came this close <laughs> to getting an early flight out of Cozumel. Wow. Okay. And you think you would full on want to died if you got on it? I know I would have wow. died. Wow. I know Talk I would have died. Talk about oh. a dodged bullet. Oh my God. Oh my God. Was and, and, and it was only because of the flight, we were there and the, there was an issue with the plane. So I had to wait a whole day. It, it was Mexico. It's, it, there's not a lot of flights. It, yeah. uh, so I had to wait. And, and now, is it true that you actually made a big scene about the fact there was a problem with the plane? You were like, do you know who I am? Like, you were really they, different. Well, that's exactly right. And in reality, though, you didn't realize at the time your life was being saved. Had no clue. Wow. None whatsoever. I, but I knew I had to get back. I knew I had to get back. You know why? Why? It was the championship game, Chiefs versus Bengals. Oh, my God. And I'm like, I can't be late to this. My son will never forgive me. Right. But meanwhile, he's lucky you did, because otherwise he'd be at the Super Bowl alone because his dad dead in the air. Yeah. What a Collapse. crazy, what a oh. crazy story. See, so all things work out the way they're supposed yeah. to work out. Yeah, yeah. Hey, and um, by the way, the diving was phenomenal. Oh, great. <laughs> three, real quick, three favorite uh, things you saw underwater. <laughs> My feet, my three favorite things I yeah, saw on the Yeah, I know you're 60 feet or more at this point, but what are the three favorite things you saw? Parrotfish. Okay. <laughs> I saw an eel, which by the way, you think, oh, they're, they're very hard to see, but I was able, I was over some, uh, a, a bit of a reef and, a, and uh, I did get to see a moray eel. Okay. They're hard to see because they move so fast they're, or they just don't no, like no, to be they're seen? No, no, like, they, don't, they don't like to be seen. Okay, gotcha. Uh, and then... All right, so parrotfish, more Parrotfish, eel. more eel, and then just a body. I don't know. <laughs> it was just like a floating... I, I don't know what happened. I don't know who was... I didn't follow up on it. Now, that's interesting. Did you tell... Or did, were you sort of like, you know what? I was too freaked out. Yeah. I didn't say a word. So I was like, oh, my God, there's just a dead yeah. body. Wow. Maybe it went deeper <laughs> than uh, 60 feet. Didn't take the... Time, and then, yeah, didn't take the class. They were like, we want everybody has to take class before they go dive. And that guy was that. like, I'm fine. Was, I'm fine. I got it. You can yeah. breathe. I get it. I'll <laughs> use this. I'll go up. I'll be able to breathe again. <laughs> Nitrogen narcosis knocked him out. Wow. Yeah. What a cool, I mean, I mean, again, obviously not a story you can tell, but a pretty cool that Paul Rudd was who found him. He'll never know. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing these things that never happened. I've never talked about this before. That's wonderful. You guys, that's Paul Rudd.